Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part three of my jQuery video tutorial. Now that I've chased away most of my potential viewers with the first two boring videos, I will now reward my favorite people out there by showing you how to do some really cool stuff with event handlers and jQuery. On the right side of your screen, you see just a bunch of stuff that doesn't really look like anything. But as you see, as I click on it, I'm now tracking all my mouse movements. And you can also see if I put my mouse over top of my image, this is automatically changing here. Keep your eyes here. If I come down here, you can also see that this changed right here as well as a timestamp was printed out the screen for when I entered information inside here. And now you're gonna see a whole bunch of other things change. And you can see that that changed. And when I click on that submit button, that changes. When I click on here, that changes. If I double click on this, this changes up here and so forth and so on. I'm also going to show you not only how to bind events to different items, I'm also going to show you how to unbind events off of different elements in a web page. And what's really cool, if you watch down here and right here, if I click on any of these guys, it's automatically going to tell me what type of element it is or if I click out here it'll just say body click inside here body you can see that all these things are being tracked so I'm going to show you every event handler in one tutorial if you want to see every single event handler here is the list and I provide a link in the underbar to this list and also here is all of the event object properties that are available to you pretty much going to show you everything except for event alt key and control key and all these different little guys but for the most part you're going to be able to figure that out because this tutorial is extremely detailed okay so here is the basics of what I got and this guy doesn't do anything I'm going to add events to it I'm going to jump over here and on the left side of your screen you're going to see another way to input the jQuery library or framework whatever you want to call it this takes it directly from jQuery and it provides the most latest version of the jQuery library automatically for you so that's how you do that and down here if you saw the previous tutorials you know that this is what is going to be called when the documents ready to start accepting jQuery commands and as we go down through here you can see that I went in and created all the HTML and gave IDs to everything that is the only thing that's been done though I created all the stuff you see on the right side. It has no functionality, which it will very, very soon. And I gave all these different blocks IDs. So that's all that's been done ahead of time. And that's just to save me from going absolutely batty and turning this tutorial into a 30 minute long ramble. Okay, so I'm gonna jump in here. And the very first thing that I'm going to do is actually bind an event to this button down here called alert on click. And how I do that is I come in here because this is jQuery, I put a dollar sign. And then since it's an ID called one button, I'm going to put a hash symbol and then I'm going to type in one button right like that. And then to bind an event, just type in bind. And then I want to bind a click event to it. So when it's clicked, it is going to call a function called alert button click. And that's all I have to do down there. So let's show you exactly what alert button click looks like. So I'm going to come down here. I'm still inside of my script, but I'm going to create the alert button click function. So what am I going to do? I'm going to type in function alert button click right like that. We're going to start off very, very simple, and then we're going to get more complicated as time goes by. What I'm going to do is if you click this button, I'm just going to open up an alert box. This is what most boring tutorials do, but we're not going to be boring for long. So that's what that guy does. And if you can see here, I reloaded it and this already has that functionality built in. That's all I did. These just couple lines of text here and I bound an event so the alert box opens. But you say that's kind of boring, so let's do something a little bit more jazzy. So for example, how do you bind multiple events to something. Here I'm going to bind everything to this text box. It's called text box one. That's the ID represented inside of it. Quote hash text box one dot bind and I'm going to bind a blur event and that just means whenever somebody leaves the text box that's going to trigger an on blur event and whenever that happens I'm going to call a function called on blur event and then what I'm going to do and yes it's legal to do this I'm going to say bind focus and that just means whenever you click inside of it it gains focus I'm going to call another function called on focus event and I'm also going to bind another event on this you can bind as many as you want on mouse down that just means when they click the mouse I'm gonna call on M down event and I'm gonna go create another bind on mouse up and if the mouse button goes up I'm going to call that and then bind change 
on change event. That means it's changed in any way. All right, so I just bound five different events all onto these guys, all onto this one text box. So now I gotta create these functions so that everything works. So I'm just gonna come down inside of here again. And hopefully I've made these function names good enough that you understand exactly what I'm talking about. On blur event, I'm going to say that I want this guy here waiting for event to be changed or the text inside of here to be changed whenever any of these events are triggered. So the ID for that is second. And I'm going to do that by going HTML, you left the box. Okay, and let's just copy this and create another one. And here I'm just going to change this to focus. And I'm going to leave this as second, you entered the box. See how easy it is to just keep triggering on these guys and keep putting them on there over and over and over again. Now I'm going to say M down event. What's that? Mouse down. You left the text box. Scroll that up. M up event. You entered the box. And then if something is changed in the text box. On change event. You changed the box. So those are all those guys. And if we reload it, you can see you entered the box is there. You left the box is there. And all of those other different changes that occur as I click in and out of the box. And you're going to see more of them as I play around and create more additional functions. So now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to start tracking inside of this box right here. Anytime the window is resized, which is also kind of cool. So I'm going to say window dot resize. And whenever that's called or whenever the window is resized, I'm going to call a function called resized window. And that's all I need to do. And I'll scroll down here and I'll create that function. Let's just copy and paste that there. Type in resized window. I'm going to again trigger the second text box inside of there with this. Except this time I'm going to be a little bit more complicated. Window was resized. And then I'm going to print out the screen. The width of the new window since it's been resized. Window dot width is all you got to do inside of there. And then I'm going to put a plus sign inside of there. H colon space plus window height right like that. And if I file save that, you can see here as I change the window height and width, all of that information is automatically updated there on your screen. So that's kind of cool too. You can of course resize anything, force this image here to be resized, do whatever you want with it. Now I'm going to actually show you how to do some things with this logo. Of course, I'm not showing you every single thing you could do with the logo. I expect you guys, like I've seen out there, that you experiment a lot with the stuff that I create, which is the only true way to learn how to program. I can never teach you really, truly how to be a great programmer. you got to do it on your own. Now I'm going to say mouse over on my image. Whenever that occurs, I'm going to call a function called mouse over me. And then I'm going to bind another event. And I'm going to say mouse out. And by the way, these guys are all built into jQuery. So if you ever want to get a click, these aren't me. I didn't type these in. I didn't make these up. These are all jQuery. And they're on that page that I showed you originally. Mouse out me. That's kind of bad English, isn't it? All right. So now that I created these two events on this image, I got to create mouse over and mouse out. Jump down here. Copy and paste those two functions. And here I'm going to go mouse over me. And I'm going to have this bound again to the second guy right here. So I'm just going to say, you put your cursor on my logo. Kind of sounds kind of dirty. Then I'm going to come here and say mouse out me. That's horrible English. Either way, you stop touching my logo. And if I save that, you can see as I put the mouse over top of the logo, the different things change right there. So those are how to bind those different events. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add an event to this button down here. And this guy has an ID of two button. So I'm going to come in here, hash symbol, two button, bind. And on this guy, I'm going to bind that it's only going to react if a double click occurs. And if it does, double click to me is going to be called the function. So I got to create that. Bounce down here, double clicked me, double clicked my button. Reload it. See, you double clicked my button. Now I'm going to show you how to add an event to an item that lies inside of a form. So I'm going to go form dot submit, which is the submit button. And I'm going to say function. And here I'm going to create an anonymous function. 
that's going to open up a boring alert box. Hit button clicked. And since you guys have been sending me a ton of code in regards to errors that you've been making, I'll show you exactly what you normally, and this is true of everybody that programs, what most of you are messing up. Like here, if you're making a call to an element that's called double button, you're typing in a lowercase there instead of an uppercase. Another thing that you guys are doing is forgetting these curly braces, so you're doing things like that. And also you're forgetting semicolons at the end whenever you need a semicolon. So for the most part, almost every error that you're sending me, I say 80% of your code errors are dependent upon variable names being incorrect or missing curly braces where you need curly braces or not closing curly braces or not closing your parentheses or starting off with a double quote and ending with a single quote. So those are the things that you're messing up almost all the time. And that's true of almost every single programmer. You're messing up variable names. You're forgetting to put hash symbols in. You're forgetting to sometimes to put periods in. If this is a class instead of an ID, and you're for using incorrect quotes, parentheses, and forgetting curly braces and parentheses and semicolons. So that's what you guys are forgetting. So those are things to look out for in regards to error checking. Didn't plan on doing that, sort of just came out of my mouth because I keep getting these. Okay, so now I'm gonna go and put another event on three button. This is unbind the logo, and I'm gonna show you how to take events off of elements on your web page. Just do this. Three button, bind, when it's clicked, unbind logo. So what do I have to do? I gotta create unbind logo and I'm gonna show you how to unbind elements. So jump down here again, throw that in there. And it's very easy to unbind elements as well. Unbind logo, and here we're gonna put logo inside of here instead of second, because we're gonna take all the events that were triggered or that were set for this image right here and get rid of them. So instead of HTML here, we're gonna have un bind and then I'm going to type in exactly what I want to take off so on mouse over so it's no longer going to trigger mouse over me and then I'm also going to unbind mouse out which is triggered whenever you take your mouse off of it and the function that was being called before and then I want to put in that final parentheses so you might be saying what did he just do let's reload it See here how this is all changing as I put that mouse on there. If I come down here and click on unbind, see now it is no longer being triggered. So that's how you take events off of items. Might not seem like the most useful thing, but you're going to see in the future exactly how that does become useful. And now as a final thing, I'm going to show you how to bind events to the body. And this is also where I'm going to show you how to do the really cool thing where you can click on elements and it tells you what you're clicking on, which is also a great way to catch all errors. And it's also something that I found by digging deep into the jQuery library. It's not something that's often taught. So with this, I'm going to be able to check that a key has been pressed, which is extremely useful. Bind. I'm also going to track mouse movements, which is really cool. You can stalk people that go onto your website, see exactly what they're doing. Not that I do that. I think you'd have to be a pretty weird, big weirdo to do that. And then if they click on anything, I'm going to grab the event that was triggered, which is going to contain whatever they clicked on, no matter what it is, which is kind of neat. And just by doing that, I'm now tracking all their key movements, all of their mouse movements, and all events in general. So I have to create all the different functions that are gonna print all that out to screen. So jump down here and create some functions. So I'll paste that in there, and I'm gonna create my function called check key pressed. And here, I'm gonna receive an event. So I wanna type that in there. And in the text box, it's labeled fifth, which is this guy right here. I'm going to type in text instead of HTML. And I'm going to put in the actual key that was pressed on the keyboard instead of just putting a key code in, which wouldn't make much sense. And I'm using jQuery for this. this is, that's all this function does or this method of type string. This is what it does. It converts a key code, which is a number that represents a key that's pressed on the keyboard into the actual key that was pressed. So that's what this does. Don't let yourself get confused by that. Scroll this up. Let's create two more functions inside of here. This one's called the mouse moved. And I need to accept an event because this is gonna be changing constantly. I'm also gonna need two of these. And in the seventh, and it ended up being ninth. Sorry about that if that's confusing. I'm gonna print a screen event dot Screen X, that's how you get the X coordinate for the mouse. And then here is how you get the 
y coordinate for the mouse, and these have to be uppercase, x and y. So those are going to be put right here and right here. And then the last thing I have to do is capture every single event. Remember, this is the thing that I say I don't see all the time. Definitely not in tutorials. And I'm going to put this, actually, I need two of these guys in here. And the guy with the ID 10th, which is this guy, and this is where a timestamp's going to go. Type in text, event dot target dot node. That's going to tell me exactly what type of element is inside of that. And here, 11th. And I'm going to leave this as HTML. Event dot time stamp. And that's going to give me the exact time in which that was clicked. So all that stuff. It's kind of cool. And then I want to type in node name. Not just node. You want to have event target node name. And now all this stuff will work. If we reload it, and you can see that as I click on all these different things, all of this information is being updated on the screen. And then as I type in different things, also that is being registered here on the screen. So there's numerous different ways you can do all sorts of things with events in jQuery. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, till next time.